Hey, what's up motivators, Taryn here. If you're considering doing a triathlon or maybe a swim run or an open water race, or maybe you're just an adult onset swimmer and you're trying to learn how to swim and be confident in the water, well, I wish you a lot of luck. This is a very, very hard thing. The good news is, is that almost everyone who takes up swimming later in life goes through this. And the better news is that through a three-step process that we are going to give you in this video, you are going to have the tools to be able to conquer your fears and get over that fear of the open water. Maybe you're afraid of just getting into a pool. Maybe you're afraid of getting into a wetsuit and being in the open water. Maybe you're afraid of race day. And in any case, we are going to get you through that with a very simple three-step process that'll get you ready. My name is Taryn Gazelle. In my 20s, I was overweight, unfulfilled, and couldn't even run to the end of the block. Over the following years, I found endurance sports, lost 65 pounds, won age groups, raced world championships, broke records, and trained and learned from some of the best athletes and coaches in the world. You too can use endurance sports to change your life and accomplish your fitness goals. You just need a system. A system that's meant for us amateurs who want to be our best while feeling our strongest and healthiest. My company Motive offers that system and I want to share some of the tips from it today. Thank you for tuning in, motivators. I remember when I first started swimming, I could not swim across the length of a pool. It took me one hour to swim 14 lengths there and back, like 350 meters, and I sat at my desk for the rest of the day burping up chlorine and evaluating the decisions that I had made in life. It was so humbling, and it took me years to really figure out why it was so difficult, but once I did, Bam! All of a sudden, everything clicked, and today I am holder of some open water swimming records, doing some of the longest open water marathon swims in the area that I live in's history. Like 37 kilometers, open water, nine hours, we're talking stuff that I never thought that I would be able to do. But once I figured it out, all of a sudden, swimming became my happy place. Swimming was very exhilarating. It took a long time for me to figure out, but I want to make that learning curve a little bit quicker for you. So the first step in this three-step process is that you need to change your mindset. It sounds very simple, but it is huge. This is the key thing. Without changing your mindset, you are going to be stuck struggling swimming for years. It's never going to feel good for you. The reason the reason that you have to start with changing your mindset is because that foreign body of water is a medium that our body is not used to being in. It's not comfortable being in it. Our brains actually tell us that that is danger, that we freak out, that we die in there. We go from standing upright to being horizontal. We go from breathing air to having our face immersed in water. We go from working harder and then moving faster to working harder and all of a sudden sinking. It's so very different that the same approaches that we take to learning how to run really well, cycle really well, work out and train very well, all of those approaches don't work out here. So you have to take a step back and think, when was the last time that I learned how to do something very, very differently from what I was capable of doing? And go all the way back to when you were a baby and learning how to walk. It didn't happen right away. You also didn't muscle your way through it. You didn't just overcome the difficulties and the challenges and if you wanted it bad enough, you just had to work hard. No, you start with tiny, tiny, literal baby steps that you built on over and over and over, over the course of a number of months. And that's what we have to do when we get into the pool. So you have to take this mindset that you check your ego at the door and you say, you know what? I am not here to swim fast. I am here to learn how to swim. And that's what takes you into step two. But what you do in step two is you commit to a process of learning basic competency in the water. And what we do with our book, Triathlon Swimming Foundations, it's one of the most highly rated triathlon training books in the world on Goodreads and Amazon. You can go and read all of the reviews for yourself and see the life-changing experiences that people go through. This book and this process of just starting with the basics of sticking your face in the water 
and blowing bubbles. And then blowing bubbles and kicking your feet gently off the surface of the water. And then sticking your face in the surface of the water and just blowing out bubbles and letting yourself sink down. And then gradually kicking your feet off the surface of the water while you're blowing bubbles and then kicking very gently. All of this is rewiring your brain to learn. You know what? As soon as I stick my face in the water, I start blowing out. I don't tense up. I calmly blow out. And I don't want to make this entire video about those drills. I'll link to a video at the end of this video where you can go and see that drill progression. But generally, what you're committing to is a series of drills where you are starting with the basic building blocks of just breathing, breathing calmly, humming in the water, not even swimming to the point where you're gradually building a stroke and being able to get across the surface of the water in the pool in a very controlled environment, an environment that's safe. There's a lifeguard on duty making sure that you aren't going to end up at the bottom of the pool. What you have to do in step two is commit to the fact that it isn't yet time to swim. The time to swim is coming, but what you have to do is step back and focus on these drills. During step two, what I encourage you to do is commit to swimming four, maybe five times a week for only about 15 to 20 minutes at a time. During these 15 to 20 minutes, essentially all you're doing is focusing on these drills and what this is doing is ingraining those thought patterns and that muscle memory of calm, serenity and control in the water and by going through the drill process, you're gradually going to teach your body how to swim and have that basic foundational open water swimming technique. Step three is where things get fun, but things also get a little bit scary. I was just in Edmonton coaching one of our athletes, Joanne Courtney, who is a world champion curler. She's an Olympian for curling. She just retired from professional curling. She just did her first sprint triathlon. She did great, but even after that triathlon, after going through it successfully, she said, I'm still afraid of the water and I don't think I'm going to be able to do any longer distances than this sprint triathlon that I just did. She was still freaking out and she still had anxiety over this. And I had to think about it for a couple of days and what I realized in Joanne's case was, well, in curling, she had nerves when she first got into big games. We all do when we get into big scenarios because it's meaningful to us. Pardon me, I have to put on some Roka shades because it's getting bright out here. But what she didn't do to get over those nerves in big games was just go and practice more because she already had the technical ability to get into those big games and throw the rock and sweep and do all of the things that she needed to do. What she did was she just got into big games more and more and gradually over the course of a number of years, those nerves went away. That's what you need to do in step three is once you've built that foundational technique from step two and the point at which you can move on from step two is you can swim 400 meters or yards continuously without any struggle whatsoever and without feeling out of breath at the end of those 400. That's the point at which you're ready to move on to step three. So in step three, what you do is you say, all right, I have the building blocks built to be able to swim. And then you have to start swimming and most importantly, get into open water. But when you get into open water, I want you to do it in a very controlled way, as opposed to going from just drills to bam, I'm going to go into open water where there's boats and who knows if there's a shark out there. I, as a kid was convinced that the Loch Ness monster was in our pool and it freaked me out. So instead of going into open water, be very controlled, stay in shallow ends in the pool and then once a week, try to get into open water. And you might say, but I'm scared. What do I do? I, I'm not super confident. What if I drown? The first thing that you need to do is get yourself a wetsuit. I think Roka, oh, hey. Roka has the best entry level triathlon and open water swimming wetsuit out there. It's $275 and has almost all of the features of their thousand dollar wetsuit, hands down best beginner wetsuit out there. So you get into open water in that wetsuit. So you have all that buoyancy. The wetsuit has more flotation in the legs than in the upper body. So it's going to keep you nice and horizontal and buoyant in the water. And then also get yourself a swim bubble. That swim bubble is going to make sure that you are visible from the shore, from people that might be watching. It's also going to give you an out. So if you start freaking out, you just poke your head up and then you float on the swim bubble and boom, hey, you're safe and you can chill out. And then you wait until you calm down and do it again. 
don't get into that position where you are working really hard and you start freaking out and you go, I'm just gonna muscle my way through this. Stop, as soon as you start building up that little bit of anxiety, get onto the swim bubble, float, calm yourself down because you don't wanna wire those pathways in your brain of freaking out and thinking that being in the open water is where you freak out. We need to take a quick second to thank a sponsor. Athletic Greens is a product that I use literally every single day. I like Athletic Greens as a replacement for a traditional multivitamin. Athletic Greens is made with whole foods. It contains 75 vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. And because it is made from whole foods and you can mix it up as a greens powder in a shake or whatever you want, it's much easier for your body to actually absorb. If you go to athleticgreens.com forward slash Taryn, you will get a free year's supply of vitamin D with your first purchase and five free travel packages. Again, that's athleticgreens.com forward slash Taryn to get yourself some Athletic Greens. Everyone that I know that's tried it has absolutely loved it, so you will too. Give it a shot. And then the final thing, this is a little bit of like you and me talk here. This is a little bit of honesty. Out here, just a couple of weeks ago, even this guy, me, 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 somebody who just said a few minutes ago that I hold record-setting open water marathon swims, I freaked out in the open water. It's been about a year since I did an open water swim and I came out here to do an open water swim and I had a freak out moment and had to float on the swim bubble because I was freaking out. But the thing about it is to understand that even somebody like me who has probably raced 60 triathlons and done hundreds and hundreds, like maybe thousands of kilometers of open water swimming and is a record setting open water swimmer, I freaked out in a 1K swim one evening here just a couple weeks ago. So understand that this is normal and this entire process of checking your ego at the door, having the fun in it and seeing the progress as you go is part of the fun. We're gonna put the video to all of that drill sequence right over here and if you wanna check out the Triathlon Swimming Foundations book, there will be a link in the description below and that will take you through everything with that drill sequence. Thank you for watching Motivators. If you're looking for a training plan that incorporates these methods that is as good as a one-on-one -on -one coach but as inexpensive as doing it yourself, check out our Motive training app that covers triathlons, running races, duathlons, swim runs, and cycling events. It's a link in the description below where you can check out your customized training plan for free. Also, if you rather listen to these tips, we also publish these videos in podcast format on the Terran's Motive Method podcast, so you can check that out. And if you don't want to do either of those things but you found this video helpful hit us up with a virtual high five by smashing the like button below later motivators